To all who come to this happy place, welcome. G'day guys, Disney Dave coming at you once again from Down Under with another uh, toy review, hunting video, sort of uh, first look kind of thing. Not that it's really first look uh, because I think these have been out for uh, a couple of weeks in the States. Uh, they've only just been released here. We are of course taking a look at the uh, second wave of uh, action figures from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Um... If you've been following my channel, uh, you would have seen that uh, a few weeks ago, probably about a month or so ago now, uh, the first wave of Rogue One figures was released. I was all over it. I knew when it was being released, and uh, I got up that morning. I had a day off, which was lucky. I headed down to my local Target, and I got there first thing in the morning, before opening time, was the first in the door, I managed to snag all the figures that I wanted uh, as the guy was putting them on the shelves. So it was uh, four individual figures and two two-packs that I bought from Wave 1, and uh, I've been eagerly awaiting Wave 2, and I've been checking my Target, and I've been checking my Toys R Us um, over the last few weeks, just making sure that the new waves of figures haven't uh, haven't come in stock. Uh, five figures, five individual figures I need, needed, and, uh, and a couple of two-packs as well. Uh, so I kept keeping my eyes open. Somehow, I dropped the ball, and I missed the release date. Release date was last Friday. It's now Friday at the time of filming this. It's Friday as well. I found out probably this Wednesday, so a couple of days ago, I found out that the wave had been released last week, and I was going out of my mind thinking, oh no, now I'm going to have to go all over the place trying to find these figures. Oh. Well, the one thing I actually learned from uh, the Rogue One... Uh, uh, release is that they, they must have learned a lesson from the Force Awakens figures because the Force Awakens waves they would have one or two character one or two of each character and you, if you didn't get them like first weekend uh, you know you'd be waiting around for weeks or uh, some in some cases you wouldn't be able to get them at all but I went into my local Target uh, last night on Thursday evening. Now, I didn't film it or anything. I didn't have time. I was sort of in a rush. I had to go get dinner and all this kind of stuff. So I, I didn't do any filming. Uh, but my local Toys R Us. Uh, Toys R Us, by the way, for some reason, are the only ones who got stock of this so far. Target, Toys R Us, uh, Big W. They all had stock of the first wave. But this second wave, for some reason, Toys R Us has got them in first. So I went to the Toys R Us, I had to run down there, oh, I need my figures, need my figures. Uh, I went there and they had heaps, heaps of stuff. First I was looking at the main section and there was just a little bit and I went through and I found two figures. Um, but then I realised the end cap was just full, like full to, to up here uh, of, of figures. And I was able to piece together most of the collection. So I was able to pick up four from my local uh, Toys R Us, but I was missing one, missing one, and I'm going, oh no, why did I miss it, why did I miss the, uh, why, why did I miss the, uh, the first day, the release day, how did I drop the ball, <sighs> I don't know, so the one I was after was uh, Orson Krennic. Which is Ben Mendelsohn's character. Now, Ben Mendelsohn is an Australian actor. He's one of my favourite Australian actors ever. And I, I really especially wanted the Ben Mendelsohn uh, action figure. And uh, so I went to another Toys R Us this afternoon. I had a lunch break today at work. So I went to another Toys R Us close to my work to try and find the awesome Krennic figure. And, uh, well, this is what happened. Alright, I found the, uh, the figures here. They have got absolutely tons of them at uh, this one. Now, as I said last evening, I went out um, trying to find uh, the new wave, <coughs> wave two. Uh, for some reason, um, I was able to find all of them except one, uh, Director Awesome Krennic. This one seems to have tons, so I'm going to I'm gonna look, I'm going to see if I can find him. Take my time just browsing through them all. Well, I've just spent about 10 minutes perusing through all these things sadly no Krennic here either which is really annoying but what I have noticed actually if we look up here 
It's a few Hasbro boxes, which uh, say Star Wars action figures, wave two. Should be what I'm after, so I'm going to uh, try and find someone and see if uh, I can get a box cracked open for me. Wait, wait, two. Yep. Alright. Alright. Here's the first box. Cool. Thank you very much. Let's have a look. Oh, yep, I can see the one I'm after straight away. Cool. That's him. Yep. Beautiful. I'll give you that back. That's okay. So I was very lucky. I got him in the end. I got my Lawson Krennic figure. Meaning I found the five Rogue One figures that I needed from Wave 2. Whew. Very, very lucky. As I said, in some cases, um, if you miss out on figures straight away, uh, there, would, uh, there would be a chance you wouldn't get them at all, or you'd be waiting for ages to get them. But I think the case with The Force Awakens was that there was more demand than there was supply. So this time round they have given more supply than there probably is demand, to be honest. Because these stores are stock filled with figures. As you saw, there is tons and tons of each figure. And there are so many Jin Erso figures on the shelves, it's not funny. And... That's going to keep those people who were complaining about where's Ray. It's going to keep them happy because there's two different variants of the Jin Erso figure now, and there are plethora. They they are there in uh, you know there's plethora of them. There's heaps of them, and uh, so it, it's it's easy to get your hands on a Jin Erso. It's easy to get your hands on a lot of figures. Apart from obviously this guy. What actually happened was when I looked in the box, I think there was only one of him in the box, whereas there were about two of each other figure, except for maybe the Princess Leia from the Rebels line, uh, the, the cartoon, the animated series. The Rebels ones, they're, they're hard to find as well because obviously there's not a, there's probably not a huge demand for the Rebels figures. So anyway, uh, at that, let's, uh, let's do what we did last time and let's just go over the figures and we're going to have a look at what's in Wave 2. Uh, now, they didn't have any of the two-packs. There was actually one two-pack, which is a Toys R Us exclusive thing. Um, I wasn't really that interested because the character in it was a character that you could get in one of these single packs and he came with a Stormtrooper and I wasn't really that interested at, at this point but if they do discount that at some point down the line I might get it. The character's in a different outfit but for this film I don't want to go too mental like I did with Force Awakens. So let's start with, um, well they're all really good characters in this line. Now the first wave, they had the, just some of these really just lame, like, background characters. We've got some really good uh, main characters in this wave too, and that's really cool. So first we're going to have a look at, oh gee, how do we pronounce his name? Churat Imwe, I think. Uh, now he's played by uh, Donnie Yen, who is a, uh, a really famous Asian actor. A Chinese actor who who has been famous for years and years doing martial arts films. I have not seen um, any of his films, uh, but apparently they are incredible. Ip Man, Ip Man, how you pronounce that? Apparently that's incredible. That is one on my to watch list. But anyway, that's uh, Chirut Imwe. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. So you get a really good look there. Same with the other ones. The same uh, artwork, which is absolutely beautiful there. Uh, you get the figure, and you get just a random little accessory thing there as well. The backs are the same. Again, unlike the Force Awakens figures, you had the uh, up the side. I told you what other figures were in the wave, or from that line. Uh, this one, it doesn't have that. Uh, it's just got this really weird advertisement for some app that you can download to your phone, and it, you, you film your, your toys, and it creates explosions and stuff or something. I don't know. Kids will have fun with that. Uh, and then, of course, up the top, you get uh, what is like a little description of the character. Tells you about the character, which is pretty cool uh, for those people who just want, a l want to know a little bit about the characters before going into the film. So that's uh, Chirrut. Apologies if I'm uh, mispronouncing that. Next up, we're going to have a look at... Why not? Let's have a look at the man himself. Um, director Krennic. Director Orson, Orson Krennic. 
Doesn't say it there, but uh, it says Director Krennic. Ah, it says Awesome Krennic on the back. So this is Ben Mendelsohn. I'm so excited. I've got a Ben Mendelsohn action figure. It's just the most random thing. He has been popping up in all his American films of late. Um, he's been doing Australian movies for years and years and years. And he's a, a big Australian actor. And he's, as I said, one of my favourite Australian actors ever. And it's really cool to see him get these little bit parts in all these American films. And now he's in he's in Star Wars. And that is so cool. I mean, you've got to get the Aussie. Rep the Aussie. And there's uh, there's him there, Director Chronic. That's really cool. I really like the cape on this. Like, they're really nice. Some of the older ones, the uh, the capes were made of like this rubber and you could uh, sort of squish it and all that kind of stuff. But I think um, if these are anything like the Kylo Ren ones, it's like just a hard moulded one. You can't really move it or anything like that. So the posability and stuff on these aren't great. Not like the ones I, I grew up playing with, but... I display them like this, I keep them packaging, not because I want to keep them pristine, not because I want to scalp them in 30 years time, but because I think the packaging and the actual figure and all that kind of stuff, they that's all part of the collection, and you've got to have the, you got to have the beautiful artwork and the figure, and it's just a really nice way to display them. For me, anyway, not that I have anyway, anywhere to display them. Next, uh, let's go on to Captain Cassian Andor. In brackets it says, uh, eat. Edu, Edal, Edu, something like that. It's obviously a planet. This is obviously the variant of the character, the costume that he wears on that planet, as you can see there. Um, because, as I said, this is a character that is in a Toys R Us exclusive two pack with a stormtrooper, and he's in like a brown leather jacket and uh, brown pants. I don't want that one just yet. I might pick it up at some point. It's probably the only two pack that they will release here. Forrest Whitaker's character is in like a four pack, and I'd like to own that character, but I don't know if we'll get the four pack. And again, little description of the character up the top and some advertisement for some toy thing, some uh, app. So that's him. That's Captain Cassian Andor. I'm, I'm really interested to see what that character is going to be like, because uh, I think he looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at the man himself. Darth Vader. I thought it was pretty good getting my hands on Darth Vader because I picked him up uh, last night and there was only one of him there. I thought, ooh, I've been able to get Darth Vader. He must be one that's hard to get because there's only one there. But at the Toys R Us I went to today, uh, they, had, they had heaps of him on the, on the shelves and as you saw, there were tons of boxes up the top too. So there'd be tons of Vaders and there are at least quite a few uh, awesome Krennics knocking about. Um... This is really cool. This is one of the best um, Darth Vader figures I've seen for a long, long time. I'm going to move Homer Simpson there because he's sort of reflecting. Um, this is the, one of the best Vader figures I've seen in a long time. The uh, detail in him is fantastic. We'll take a closer look soon, but the detail in him is absolutely beautiful. He comes in a lightsaber, which is interesting because the Hot Toys figure... Didn't come with a lightsaber when I announced the Hot Toys figure anyway. They may amend that. Sometimes they do Hot Toys. They will announce uh, something after the film. Because they don't want to spoil the film. So they do the initial announcement a few months before the film. Film comes out and then they go, oh, by the way, we're adding a lightsaber. And they did it with the Ray figure. Because it was a bit of a spoiler for The Force Awakens that Ray picked up a lightsaber. Um, so they uh, when they re initially announced the Hot Toy, they didn't announce it with a lightsaber. Uh, just after the film was released, they said, well, by the way, guys, she comes with Luke's lightsaber. So this one comes with a lightsaber, but the Hot Toys doesn't, which led some people to think, well, maybe he doesn't use the saber in the film. Who knows? The film's only uh, a month or so off now. Uh, we'll find out then. I'm really excited. Um, of course, you've got a little info on Darth Vader on the back. Not that you really need any, because uh, he, uh, he is the he is Star Wars. It's his, it's his wars. It's his stories, really. Anakin Skywalker. Saga. Um, but that's awesome. That, how cool is that artwork of Darth Vader right there? That is really, really cool, powerful artwork. And I haven't I haven't bought a Darth Vader figure for ages, but that's one of the best Darth Vader... Uh, Darth, Darth Vader. Darth Vader figures I've seen for a long time, in this, in this uh, size, anyway. And last but not least, actually, I'm going to pull out... Okay, just... Here she is. Okay, so I wanted to pull out uh, Jin Erso from Wave 1 because there is a Jin Erso from Wave 2 as well. 
So they've gone. Well, there was such an outrage over Ray. I mean, Ray had two different uh, figures in in the standard packaging. She also had another figure with her speeder. And they just brought actually. There's another Ray figure with this in a Rogue One packaging as well. Um, but it was a big thing, obviously. Uh, people couldn't find the Ray figures, uh, so now they've given you two options. And I should mention that the Wave One Gin, um, there were tons of them there. Uh, there was tons of every figure because they've obviously re-released Wave 1, they've put new batches out, and there's just tons of absolutely everything. So these two were sitting there on the shelves together. That's the original one, and this is the new one. So this is the uh, Jedha, Sergeant Jinnah, so Jedha, um, and this is one from Edow, Edu, or whatever it is, the same one that uh, that bloke was from, um, Captain Cassian Andor. So that's the new Jinnah, so the, the uh, artwork on that is so cool. I could go on and on about the artwork. It's almost my favourite part about these these uh, these toys. The artwork and just everything is just perfect. Absolutely beautiful. And that's always been a big part of it. I will keep going on about that. Even the first release of the figures from the 1970s, they were uh, the people buy the card. People buy the card without the figure as a collectible. Um, so there she is there. This is her in the Jetta outfit. There's a bit of glare there, but I will give you a very close look at all of them properly in a minute. Um, so that's her in the Jetta disguise, and uh, that's her from the Eda from Wave 1 if you missed it. And that's a comparison of the two. They're in different outfits. There, different picture. Just depends on what, what gin you want to get your hands on. Looking at them, they're really not that, that different, really. That's more of an action-y one, and that's more of a sort of more of a fem feminine one, I suppose. Um, she's in combat gear, but I, I think that's more of a feminine one, whereas that's more of a, you know, badass woman kind of thing. I love these female characters. I just, lo I just love a, a really strong female character. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to Jyn Erso. Um, if Disney handle... Her, the way they handled Ray, the way they have handled uh, some of the characters from the Marvel films, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, uh, Maria Hill, uh, Captain... The way they, that they are going to handle Captain Marvel, I know, is going to be absolutely wonderful. But if they if they handle this character the same, I'm really looking forward to it. And Felicity Jones is one of my absolute favourite actors at the moment. I've been... I said in the last video, I've been following her career for a long time, and I'm really excited to see how she does in a Star Wars film. Really, really excited. I'll put the Wave 1 figure back in the bag. And what I'm going to do, same as I did on the last video, I'm going to lie these out. I'm just going to give you a really close look at all of them. I'll zoom in. I'll give you a look at the sculpts. I'll give you a look at the the, the accessories and all that. And all that. And uh, a close look at the artwork, which I love. And, uh, and then we'll reconvene. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we have our second wave of Star Wars Rogue One figures as I've just shown you. Um, I'm going to give you a, a closer look at these, uh, just so you can see really what you get with them. Up close. Again, of course, not great uh, likenesses on these 3.75 inch figures, but when you're working with such a small sort of template, you're not going to get, you know, sort of a Hot Toys quality or something like that. But it's something that you come to expect from these, and it's it's really a uh, it's the charm of the whole thing. They're not perfect, but uh, they do the job. I love these Jin Erso figures. I really love the Ray figures from the Force Awakens line. They were my uh, favourite ones. Now, where they really do excel, though, if we're talking about likenesses and uh, and sculpts and all that kind of stuff, the um, non-human characters, the sculpts are actually really good. They do robots and uh, and costume characters very well. This is a really cool Darth Vader figure, as I said. This is probably one of the greatest uh, little Darth Vader figures they've put out in a long time, anyway. It's just really, really cool. It gives you a good idea of the look of the character in the film. Because, um, 
There's minor variations in the Darth Vader costume and the mask and everything between films. Um, so it gives you a good idea. It's very A New Hope looking, which is good. Because obviously it's set not long uh, before. Let's look at this guy. As far as likenesses are concerned, this one's actually really good. I mean, this is not the worst likeness I've ever seen on a figure. That's actually quite good for something um, this small. If you compare that to that, I mean, that's actually not that bad at all. That's a really cool figure too, I really like it. And again, the artwork on these is just stunning. And then, of course, over to Krennic. Not a wonderful likeness once again, but it's good. It's good enough. I mean, you know who it is. Gorgeous art. And, of course, I mentioned before, they all come with these just random little um, accessories. Things that aren't seen in the film. Or any of that kind of thing, but they're just there so you can, so the kids can have a little bit of fun, create scenes that weren't in the movie, and I mean that's that's always the best part of of playing with these figures as a kid, just role playing and creating your own scenes and things that could happen, alternate versions of the films, alternate versions of film scenes. I mean that's that's the best part about playing with little action figures as a kid. So that's a really nice. Um, that's a really nice wave there. I really like these figures. So there you go, you've, got, you've had a pretty good look at uh, all the uh, Wave 2 figures from the Rogue One line. What I think I might do now actually is I've got, I've got the Wave uh, 2 figures out now. I'm going to bring the Wave 1 figures out, which I've got here in my uh, Target bag still from the, uh, from the first day that they were released when I went and picked them up. I'm going to lay actually all of them out so, and we can just have a look at uh, the entire Wave 1 and 2 uh, lined up next to each other. Just so you can get an idea of what the uh, entire collection looks like together. Okay, so here they are. I mean, that's actually quite a modest um, collection of figures there. The Rogue, sorry, the uh, Force Awakens figures, I mean, there were three or four waves of that. And it was just, like, it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot of money and it was a lot of figures. And my collection of uh, Force Awakens action figures are just sitting in this uh, bag. I'm trying to find somewhere to display them. Same with these. Um, I've got to find somewhere to display them at some point. But there you go, that's quite a nice, modest little collection. And I sort of do hope that that's about all they do. Uh, for the Rogue One line, because really that's just a nice little collection there, and I, I couldn't imagine there being too many other characters. I mean, there's a Forest Whitaker's character, and uh, there's there's another character or two which I know are coming out in special packs, like two packs or four packs, or that kind of thing. Um, but for the single figures, there you go. There's your Wave One and Two. For now, the complete collection. We'll see what happens uh, in the coming months. Alright, so that just about covers everything. What I should mention as well, while we're on the topic, I, I had to buy some of the pop vinyls. There's my man, Ben Mendelssohn, there's awesome Krennic. I've, I'm not a stickler for keeping pop vinyls in boxes. I like to have my pop vinyls out, as you can see. There's tons of them across there. Um... Because I'm not, I'm not a stickler for keeping things in boxes. I said I really only keep these in the boxes for the artwork. Um, pops are gotta be out. They gotta be around to juggle around. Jin Erso I bought as well, who's really cool. I ended up buying like four Ray pop vinyls, I think. Um, but I, I don't want to go. Like I said, I don't want to go too crazy on the Rogue One stuff. It's why, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going absolutely mental, Captain Cassian Andor. There's a ton of these. There's like 20 of these already from this from Rogue One pop vinyls, different variants on the characters. Um, like I said, I don't want to go too crazy on this film. It's just a small film in the whole scheme of things, and uh, I just want a little bit of merchandise, a little bit of representation in the collection. And uh, I think I think that's probably just going to about do me. I don't think they're going to do a third wave, as I said, but. Who knows, they might in the end. And if it just comes to buying another three or four figures, then so be it. I'm not buying vehicles. I'm not going absolutely crazy this time around. Um, yeah. 
So, that covers all of that. I think, let me think. Yes, that covers absolutely everything. Rogue One. Figures are out now. They've been out in the States for a couple of weeks. They're out now in Australia. I'm guessing they're probably out around the world. Uh, head out, pick them up. There is going to be heaps and heaps and heaps of them, I promise you, because uh, there were heaps of them today and heaps still in boxes up the top. So there is going to be people going, oh, this figure's rare. Well, uh, th these ones aren't going to be rare. These ones aren't going to be rare. I've seen actually, I've seen Star Wars Episode One figures in second-hand collectible stores selling for no more than they were worth when they were first released. Some of them are, are even cheaper now because they're just not in, not in high demand. There's so much of them. The reasons the ones from the seventies are so uh, worth. Uh, hold so much worth these days is because people didn't keep them in pristine boxes people ripped them out played with them but people didn't think about collectibles it was a new thing back then merchandising was new when star wars hit the scene that was really the first big merchandise uh you know conglomerate thing uh so to actually have those figures in packet is rare because everyone ripped them out but these days everyone keeps everything in packet so along the line it doesn't pick up value so, that's everything. Thank you for joining me once again. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a subscribe here on the YouTube and give me a like over on the Facebook so you can keep up to date with everything I'm doing with this channel. There's going to be some bigger and better things coming soon. I promise you I'm getting ready to unveil some really exciting stuff and I want you guys to come along with me on this journey. It's been nearly a year doing this channel and it's time to time to pick, pick up the speed. So give me a subscribe, give me a like, keep up to date. Thank you once again for watching. I hope I will, uh, I'll see you in the next video. So so uh, take it easy guys and I hope you have a magical day.